I'm here with artist Cheryl Boglioli, and Cheryl has brought what I think is just a stunning piece of art that looks like it's full of fossils. It is, but it's fossils that we've created ourselves. I didn't so have it's to go digging for these. Fake fossils. These are fake fossils. Which I love. Faux fossils. Faux fossils. Very fancy. So how do we start? Well, it's quite simple, actually. It just takes a few ingredients. You can use some pre-bought molds that you can purchase, or you can just make your own. We've got all kinds of different things that you can make molds out so of. So actually, if you had one fossil, you could yes. mold it and then make a bajillion. Absolutely. Or even, you know, I found some shells on the beach, and so I was able to do that, a little doll's head, little flowers, just anything that's hard that you can create a mold around. Absolutely. Cool. So then to create the the product that we're going to create our fossils out of, I'm gonna use some textile medium, which is a liquid, and I've just poured a little bit in here, and I've started some already, as you can see. So it's funny, because textile obviously means fabric, and you're using it, though, not for fabric. I'm, yes, I use it for anything that is porous, basically. Oh. Um, I can use it on fabric, I can use it on cloth. And what was the powder that you just added? It's. It's a stone type of powder. It's gonna give a stone look, but it's just basically little fibers. It's almost like a paper mache, but huh. I'm gonna mix enough in here that I can create almost like a bread dough consistency. I was gonna say, it looks like, well, you kinda of look like you wanna lick the spoon, but I'm pretty sure you don't wanna do that. You don't, and this <laughs> is non-toxic, so you don't have right. to worry about it or anything, but you just wanna make sure that it's releasing and create an actual dough, a clay. And I notice that you're using a disposable container and a disposable spoon, and I assume that after you mix it, the container's kind of trashed, and it's time to throw it away. Or you can let it dry and just peel it out of here and use it again. What? Yeah, <laughs> that's why I'm I do sorry. It you can just peel it out of there. A lot of the times, as soon as it's dry, I can just I can just peel it right out because it doesn't stick to plastic. It doesn't stick that to things is that are so cool. <laughs> no, because that's one of those things like so, I can totally see that you could because of course if you can mold it. It wouldn't stick to plastic. Okay, my mind, my brain is going now about all the things you can do exactly. just with a dirty container. Just with a dirty container. That's so cool. So it's just like making bread. You know, I just keep rolling it up until it's not sticking to my hands anymore. So see, okay. it's not sticking to my hands. So I've basically and you are made wearing my gloves. Own place. I am just to protect my hands. It's not going to hurt me if I don't mm -hmm. wear gloves. You just have to wash your hands a whole lot more often if you do if you don't have gloves on. And so once you've got this formed, then you're just going. You can even you can try some if you want because Yay. it's not that sticky now. Oh yeah. And break Ooh. off a piece, and we're just going to press it into our mold. Now, that was amazing to me that you actually knew exactly how much to pull off to fit in the mold. Is that just experience it's or do just you just experience eyeball and it? just kind of eyeball okay. wing it? And if, if you didn't have enough, could you add more? Just okay. add it right into it. Yeah, just press into it. So if you only put a little bit, so just put okay. a little bit in there. Let's pull it just a little bit in here. Right. Yeah. Squish it down in there. Okay. And then just add more. Okay. And if I do the reverse, meaning I add too much. Then pinch some Just away. pinch some off and we're fine. Yeah, so if you've got too much here, we'll just pinch some off. Oh, and just and, put it back in. And just put it back in, right. And if you have some left over, just finish filling it or wrap it up with saran wrap, plastic wrap or something, and use it again so within a couple days. So we're gonna let that set up how long, you were just saying, in a few days, so it's actually gonna last. If it's completely wrapped, mm -hmm. airtight, it'll last a couple days. Now, in the molds that, to set up? I actually pop mine out right away. Because if I leave them in here, sometimes they'll shrink inside the mold and change. So do so, I get to do this too? Yeah. I'm okay, just so break just it bend off. it. Now you want to be a little careful because it is really soft. I can see that it's almost yeah. clinging to the sides. Yep. And then just kind of pop it out. Okay. I'm a beginner, Cheryl. I there don't want to ruin your thing. No. But let's see. Okay. As long Can as you I... pressed it down in there. Yeah, well, yeah. well, we're about, this is the moment when we're about to find out whether I'm a disaster. Oh, <gasps> it worked. It worked. So you can like smooth it That's out awesome. or you can take this And I can see it. some that are finished there. So what are we gonna do with those once they dry? All right, so you want to let them dry enough that, they're, that, that you can actually use them. Mm -hmm. And so then I'm gonna use a canvas and I've got one here that I've already started. And what I did was I took some of the textile medium and I just put it on here with a palette knife. Mm -hmm. Then I mixed a little bit of the stone type of powder. It's going to give a stone look and created some of this texture towards the middle. And then I wanted to create a little bit more. Not Now quite as you're thick. mixing up a different batch because you're looking for a different consistency. Cons exactly. 
And I was so. going to say, like, that's the fun thing, too, I always find, is if you use the same materials, like you mold it, and then you're putting it on the canvas, then you're really actually able to have everything sort of match in it, some way, texture-wise. Right, and it'll all look like a complete project together. So you'll actually create this more of a consistency of a modeling paste of some sort. I can see it. Sorts. You couldn't actually pull it out in your hand like we did and pinch right. pieces off. Right, but I could use it with a stencil. I could use it with, um, I could push it on there and put mm -hmm. a stencil stamp into it or something of that nature. But I want to take this and create some texture in this area so that I have something to embed these fossils into. Oh, so it's going to be your adhesive. Exactly. Perfect. So cool. So it's all going to tie in together. And you just kind of build it up and you create whatever little shapes that you want to create. And then you can take some of these and just kind of snuggle them in. So and cool. And I see, you know, you actually, you have a bunch of stencils, by the way, that are mm -hmm. very similar in feeling to what you're doing because they have all these sort of skeletal things. And that's a nice way, again, design-wise, to make things really have rhythm. Keep it all together. Exactly. So, so what's the next step once this dries? Right. So you finish embedding it, and you're going to get it the way that you want it. And if you'll just move that out of the way, I'll show yes. you one that I've already got ready. So here's one. I just want to touch it. And you can. So I already embedded the texture. I, you see, see here where I, stand, I stenciled in some of the texture paste and put in some little textured balls and whatnot. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use some wax. Okay. And wax has been used for years and centuries and hundreds and hundreds of years to create a preservative, basically, huh. on a lot of your art and to help create layers too. So we're just going to sponge this, that section right there and get it nice and done. Now obviously, if we had the time, you'd work on the whole piece at exactly. once. Exactly. But we're just gonna do one little section so people can understand what's happening. What we're doing. Now you're sponging it on so that it gets in the crevices. That's why you're not like using a paper towel or something. Right, right, I see, right. I get it, okay. There you go. And then once we have that, then we can start adding color. Now, would you do it while the wax is still, I mean, does wax need to dry? This is a cold wax. Oh. So this, you don't have to heat this, you mm -hmm. don't have to press it. This is going to dry over time through this process of evaporation. Okay. Yep. So while it is still damp, then we're going to use, I've created my own inks mm -hmm. using just some different um, pigments. pigments and whatnot. And you can create this and just start adding your color through here. And so I'm using a little bit of a bluish color and some yellow, and we can mix this and continue to mix. You can also add straight pigment to add more little bursts of color and just sprinkle those right in. So I can see that you're using a blue color and a yellow color and you have a brown color over there. So are you choosing just random colors or do each of these sprays have a different reason? No, I'm just keeping these together because I know that if I use the blues and the yellows, they're gonna keep with this little C feeling that we have going on here and they're gonna mix well and they'll create green. And, and if we look at the finished one, I can see that it totally looks like it came from under the sea. That's awesome. Thank you, Cheryl. You're welcome.